and gentlemen, welcome back to uh, Technical Service 101 channel. Uh, as promised on uh, the Roll It Up forum and to uh, uh, in the uh, previous video, the 3 kilowatt rig that I've just about completed building now. I've got uh, 2.4 kilowatts of it completed and installed. Um, because we were overdriving that rig and because it was dependent on fan cooling uh, I wanted to ensure that should we have a fan failure or the likes uh, that the uh, cobs would be protected against that eventuality so for this build I used these little fellas let me just zoom in here okay, these little fellas here this is an NTC thermistor. This particular one is a, a 300 mega ohm and turned out to be too low value. But essentially, these come. These are the actual ones that I'm using on this this project. These come in this in their bare through hole format. This part here is the actual temperature sensing thermistor, and these are obviously the legs. Uh, in practice you need to uh, use heat shrink to cover these and just leave a little exposed for connecting them just so that you don't short between these the two legs on the heat sink but that is a 1 mega ohm uh, minus 55 to plus 150 degrees C uh, NTC thermistor NTC standing for negative thermal coefficient. Uh, essentially what this refers to is that the uh, normal in the normal um, order of things that uh, resistance increases with temperature. One of these devices are specifically designed so that their resistance so their resistance decreases with temperature. So this is rated at one mega ohm at 25C and it begins to drop from that very quickly as soon as you go above that, about 5% per degree centigrade. The reason why I've opted for these is because they're, um, their resistance at my 50 degree um, desired temperature for my heat sinks gives the appropriate amount of resistance so that I don't see any or very much dimming of the ballast just simply uh, from the things coming up to temperature. What we're looking to do is we're looking to protect from over temperature. So in order to do that I have constructed this little demo rig here. So what we have is my regular heatsink profile, which I'm sure you'll all be familiar with now. We have the thermistor pickup from the multimeter here. From the multimeter here, which is giving us our temperature in degrees C. And then we have one of those 1 mega ohm thermistors stuck next to it, connected up to our dimming rail on our dimmer, dimmable 300 watt driver there. So in theory, when we bring that up to uh, approximately 100 degrees, we should see a, a dramatic fall off in resistance, which would be the equivalent of, one moment, I've forgotten it, oh, no, there it is which would be the equivalent of our standard potentiometer which is in essence a variable resistor so and uh, the way that we deploy resistors uh, these potentiometers in this circuit is that uh, off will be uh, zero resistance i.e. the uh, 10 volts will be able to connect directly to earth and, and zero that voltage out 
and the further around we go on the pot the higher resistance we get so uh, yeah so the brighter the less dimming in effect that we get the higher resistance we go so um, I think I can demonstrate this actually side by side might be the easiest way so if we just plug that Dim that down, even with the semester in the circuit. And if we look at our watts here, we're at 291 watts. The driver is uh, 300 watts, so we're about hmm, 2-3% short there, which isn't bad. So we're applying about 2% dimming cold. That can be rectified by putting uh, additional resistors in the circuit. Right, okay, so let's just turn that down so I'm not blinded. There we go. Right, so the next job is to. Uh, yes, just to show you how sensitive these things are. So, let's connect my meter to that. And turn that to aims. Okay, and um, what you're seeing there is that that's currently reading at just about one mega ohm. Now, watch that dial. It's already at half a uh, half a mega ohm, 500 kilo ohms. Sorry, 5,000 kilo ohms. Ah, 500 kilo ohms. Jesus Christ, Jack, get it right. And you can see how quickly that reacts to the temperature. So you can see how we've got to be quite delicate with our application of this. So now let's see if we can demonstrate that in terms of dimming. So we'll just turn on our heat plate here. So you can see the temperature is coming up there a little, and straight away we've got a response from our watt meter here. We're showing a 3 watt drop for a 15 degree temperature rise currently. So we're now at our, approximately, at our 50 degrees that we're aiming for ideally. Let's just turn that off for a second just so I can display this. Oh, as you can see we've exceeded our 50 degrees now, we're up around 75 degrees, but our wattage is just starting to drop off. So we're now down at sort of 70 watts. And at around about 50 degrees there, we were still around the high 70s. Let's turn that back on. Here you are, some more. And what we're looking for is for that to drop off to very nearly zero by the time we're at 150C. Okay, so... Okay, so we've just cooled that heatsink down a little more. 
So we're back down at our. Uh, well, just to explain what happened there was uh, the aluminium tape that is perfectly serviceable under all normal conditions just simply overheated, the glue came undone, and the thermistors would no longer uh, read off of the back of the heatsink that both the temperature and the thermistor uh, came away. Uh, if you don't have a direct contact, contact, then obviously you're not reading the temperature directly. Um, and you're not going to get accurate, an accurate dimming. In service, what I do about this is I make a little drill hole into the back of the heatsink, just behind the middle of the cob, being careful not to go all the way through, of course. And then I epoxy the tip of the thermistor into that hole. Anyway, so back to the example, back to the demonstration. Uh, if I just uh, let's bring this back into the screen for you there. Right, so if I just turn this back up. Right, so that you can see we're back up very nearly to our sort of 290. Um, uh, and that's at our uh, targeted 50 degrees C. It's also worth when you're doing these temperature tests, just feel what temperature the heat sink is at that indicated temperature because it's, it's quite easy to get a, a feel uh, for the actual heat sink temperature just simply by touching them on a regular basis while you're reading the temperature. Uh, 60 degrees is um, just about bearable, you can leave your finger on there, 80 degrees C, you're going to hurt, hurt yourself. Um, so yeah, pretty straightforward. Right, before this temperature drops off too much, let's just get that back on. Right, let me just dim this down for a minute. Just so I don't go blind. So we should see that temperature rise quite quickly because we're now in direct contact with the actual hot plate rather than um, through the medium of the heat sink. Yeah, okay, so that is coming up quite quickly. Okay, so if I unleash the beast and take that right up to flat out, and you can see there that's. See there, that's dropped down to 280 at 60C, we're now up to 70. Down at around 280, so we've dropped 10 watts. And now we're reaching the 80C. Point 80C, oh, that's actually, that's just 80C of the thing, so. Pleasantly hot to touch, and as you can see, we're now down at 270, 276, 85, 87 degrees. So we're coming up to 100 degrees C. And we're now down at 70 watts. Of course, in service, as the temperature rises, this is going to cut into the dimming circuit and uh, eventually reach an equilibrium. So the lights will never actually turn completely off. They'll just simply reach a point at which they're no longer uh, overheating the, the heat sink to the point where it's going to risk damaging the cops. So you can see now we're up at around 125 degrees C and we're down at 250 watts, so we've already dropped most part of 50 watts off of that total input and dropping all the time as we get nearer to 150C. OK, 
Okay, so there we are at 150 degrees C and we're down at 200 watts, there or thereabouts, 210 watts. So we're, uh, we're effectively dimming by a value of um, approximately 30% in this case. But like I say, this is, um, uh, let me just tip the camera up here to illustrate a little better. We've got these units here, which, uh, well, this one's just been running for quite some significant time, and it's actually perfectly capable of um, passively cooling itself moderately. Uh, but if we were to be overdriving this, this is uh, uh, driving at almost precisely the uh, rated forward current. I'm about this, this array itself is actually going to be being driven off of an 800 watt power supply. So it will be at uh, nearer to 120 to 130 percent drive current, which Which will be at the absolute upper limit to what these heat sinks could possibly cope with passively cooled. So, although we will be actively cooling them, this will be for protection in the case of a fan fan failure. So, there you go. There's the Mr. Protection 101, and hardly uh, massively technical equipment. To to suss it out. Uh, I could have illustrated putting additional resistors and things in the circuit to correct for various settings. Unfortunately each of these dimming circuits is a slightly different uh, value so uh, it's not a universal. I can't tell you use this particular thermistor. I have to kind of experiment, use, um, uh, use potentiometers to work out what your, what your value is. You can soon measure that. This one in fact is a double the mister. So if I put a, if I put a meter, if I put a meter across the back of it, I can measure the resistance, and you can see that's about uh, two hundred and twenty kilo ohms from nothing to full on that circuit. So that would be, on this particular driver, that would be the the uh, maximum temperature resistance that you would be looking for on your thermistor. Uh, any questions? Put them in the chat. Happy to answer them. Answer them. Uh, find me on the Roll It Up forum discussing this sort of stuff. Uh, big up the Roll It Up boys. Peace out.